This is our final section of GDP chapter, and um, I've just talked about uh, measuring nominal versus real GDP. Here is a graph that looks at the two, and you can see GDP with a base here of 2000 and nominal GDP, and surprise, surprise, they cross exactly at the year 2000, which is the year that they are both equal. And you saw from the previous uh, calculations that yes, at the base year they're both equal because we are in essence looking at the same thing. Notice that <clears throat> since 1965 GDP, both nominal and real, have been steadily going upward. There's been some bumps in the road, <clears throat> but overall GDP has gone up. I can safely attest that right now, which is uh, 2000. 9-2010 GDP is still going up, although unemployment is not really, <clears throat> is still a bit of a drag on the economy, more than a bit. And, okay, let's go on to one more measure of GDP, and that's called the GDP deflator. Now the GDP deflator is an overall, is a measure of the overall level of prices. It's a means of measuring inflation, we will look at CPI, Consumer Price Index, in the next chapter. Definition, the GDP deflator is 100 over the, times the nominal over the real GDP. So first we need to calculate the nominal and then the real and then get the GDP deflator. <coughs> One way of measuring the economy's inflation rate is to compute the percentage increase in the GDP deflator from one year to the next. And here's the calculation. There's the GDP deflator, which is 100, owing to the fact that 2002 is the base year. Uh, 2003 is nominal divided by real. 2004, nominal divided by real. So 14.6%, 12.2%. So from 03 to 02 to 04, there was a 14.6% rise in prices. And from 03 to 04, there was a 12.2% rise in prices. Now, in <clears throat> the um, since you guys are doing the online course in the Aplia, uh, section, I am sure there is going to be um, questions asking you to calculate nominal, real, and GDP deflator. If there is not, I will put them in there. So you will have plenty of practice on doing the nominal and the real and the GDP deflator. All right, let's go on to our final section, which is a little bit more philosophical, and that is GDP and economic well-being. Real GDP per capita is the main indicator of an average person's standard of living. But real GDP is not a perfect measure of well-being. Robert Kennedy issued a very eloquent but harsh criti criticism of GDP. And it says, GDP does not allow for the health of our children, the quality of their education, or the joy of their play. It does not include the beauty of our poetry or the strength of our marriages, the intelligence of our public debate, or the integrity of our public officials. It measures neither courage nor our wisdom nor our devotion to our country. It measures everything in short except that which makes life worthwhile and can tell us everything about America except why we are proud that we are Americans. So. Now, it's a powerful indictment of GDP as a measure of society's well-being, but we use it anyway because it is really the only game in town right now that is generally accepted to tell us how well the economy is doing. But there are some issues with GDP. What does it not value? A big one is the quality of the environment. So GDP does not measure the intrinsic value of the trees in, in the forest, 
it measures very extrinsically the value of the wood that the trees can provide. <clears throat> GDP does not measure leisure time. So the amount of, it only measures the amount of work that one does. So the value of leisure is a big thing. Except, of course, if you spend money as part of your leisure, then that would count as GDP. But just kind of hanging around, nope, doesn't count in GDP. Non-market activities, such as the child care a parent provides his or her child at home. So anything that does that is not a <coughs> market calculation is not included in GDP. Equitable distribution of income. So GDP does not look at equity. GDP does not look truly at happiness. Only happiness as you are spending money. Now, I may put on a video, at least if I have the link to it, on the country of Bhutan. And they have a, a measure of GDP known as gross national happiness. And I may put that on for you guys, and we'll have a bit of an online discussion about the Bhutan happiness video. Okay, so why do we care about GDP? Having a large GDP enables a country to afford better schools, a cleaner environment, health care, etc. Material comfort enables people to appreciate the finer things in life. <clears throat> And GDP can either confirm or deny your subjective feelings. Many indicators of the quality of life are positively correlated with GDP, such as... This is GDP and life expectancy. So the countries that have a higher real GDP per capita have citizens who live longer. And you can see Nigeria... Um, very, very low on life expectancy and GDP per capita. GDP in adult literacy. Same thing. Higher GDP, more adult literacy. The, your citizens have more time and an opportunity because they're more productive to learn to read. Internet usage and GDP. This is really quite a telling graph. Um, <clears throat> Japan, Germany, and the U.S., and probably uh, other European countries as well, very, very strong in Internet usage, and countries such as um, all the ones listed on the bottom right-hand corner, uh, very low in GDP per capita, very low in Internet usage. I would think China, though, here's China right here, I've been hearing that their Internet usage has gone up considerably, so they may have moved up a little bit. Probably the same with Brazil as well. But still, high correlation between GDP and Internet usage. And I do believe 